Howdy friends, <coughs> Bob Filia here to examine the effects of global warming. And to demonstrate, I have placed a globe in this microwave oven and set it for about 10 minutes. Let's see what it looks like now. Yeah, I'll tell you, I would say that's about done. Hmm, it's a little bit smaller, it kind of feels a little mushy and, and it, it's hot! Are you fascinated by designs from other countries? We'll take a look at some from around the globe on today's Christopher Lowell Show. Huh, I wonder where that thing went. Well, you know the old law of gravity, what goes up must come down. I'm Christopher Lowell. Don't you just love rooms designed with a beautiful and exotic flair? Yeah, exotic. You know, when objects from faraway places are used to enhance a decor and give it sort of that subtle hint of mystery and adventure. Mm, me too. Well, today we're going to show you how with some hot, hot global design ideas, and I really mean these are so hot, does the word global warming mean anything to you? Well, I mean, cool, I mean, hot. Okay, so. Today, we're going to be taking a big entrance, it's my, one of my room reduce, and we're going to be transforming that into a fabulous, imported style space. Yep. We're also touring a fascinating Indonesian warehouse showroom. Mm-hmm. Plus, visiting a designer who's an expert when it comes to blending lots of multicultures. Yep. And, if you're tired of those crummy old corridors, oh yes, the cold door demo, mm-hmm, we've got a fabulous way to make them part of any decor and make them look good. So let's take a look at some examples when we talk about global design influences. They don't necessarily have to be strictly Asian. They can be, well, just about anything. Let's take a look. Yes, this is a book, and it is called Safari Chic. We think it's really cool. This came to our attention, and as usual, we like to take you to the library to help you reduce your, your book money time so you can get a real bang for your buck. So if you see pictures in these books that you relate to and they, you think that they should be a part of your ongoing library, Cool. Let's take a look inside of Safari Chic. Safari Chic is by the author B.B. Jordan. Just thought we'd kick it off with this fun picture, which we think is so great. Talk about having a, this commune with nature, huh? Love that. All right, let's move along. That was a fun one. Let's take a look. This actually is a tent. Can you believe it? Yes. This actually is all canvas here, canvas top. But what I want you to notice, which I think is really cool, which you could add to any ceiling, is I love these beams. Look at these beams up here. How that raw wood up there, those timbers, really ground this room and give it a fabulous look. I also love the deep, rich colors. That khaki, khaki green with the bright red with the toile. Very, very pretty, very Euro-inspired. Let's take a look at the next one. This one I like a lot, too. Here you can see a little bit of that thatched roof look top of here. In another episode, we actually show you how you can take bamboo shades and actually attach them to the wall with elements like this and get just about the same look. Pretty cool. All right. Something else I like, too, is I like the way the gallery has been defined within this three-foot range go going all the way around the room, kind of linking one wall to the other. Let's take a look at the next one. I thought this was interesting. This sort of gives us icons that we can kind of look at in our minds when we go shopping. Here you see... These wonderful ebony balls, which are, look like they're very African-inspired. Here you see some of the wonderful, highly geometric, very dramatic textual pieces, very graphic pieces that can be added to a room to really give them that kind of drama. Here, little details, like these little furniture details, the stripe of the zebra. All of these things bring to mind very exotic, well-traveled areas. Let's move on. Here again, I love this tent thing going on here, but more importantly, this is a room basically within a room. This is something that you could do actually within your own space. Here you see there's a frame made, then all the fabric is taken and it's drawn up to a large ring that's suspended from the ceiling. The background is a wonderful taupe color. Here you see one of those wonderful graphic tapestry elements draped across the bed. It's beautiful, it's quiet, it's poetic, and it's dramatic. That's what this sort of drama can really add to a room. Let's take a look at the next one. Here again, this could be lots of fun. This is going to tie into our room makeover today where we've used a little bit of this bamboo and reed inspired. Here, this sink is just created by a simple half round of plywood and then 
staple to it is just this reed. We also see this reed being picked up back here. It's a wonderful texture. You've seen us where we've taken reed, framed it into large frames, and then mounted pictures over the top of them to give that same kind of effect. Remember, it's all about illusion. Let's take a look at the next one. Here, again, you see that same reed that they've actually used with poles. And they've used it as not a half wall, but like a three-quarter wall that goes all the way around to create basically an indoor-outdoor living space. And then, to these poles, they've added a roof where they've actually taken and with this sort of cabana inverted pleated pieces made it look really sort of interesting. And I think one of the things that you notice about this is there's a decidedly sort of safari kind of feeling to it, but on top of it, there's also very much a European influence mixed together. Let's take a look at the next. Here again, more of that graphic look. This is what I was talking about, where you just take the bamboo, frame it out, use it as a background element, and place stuff on top of it. Here, too, long cascading pieces of fabric with prints mounted on top of them. What a terrific idea for a guest bedroom, don't you think? And here again, you see elements of the graphic. Now, quite frankly, I think this against a solid texture would be a little more pleasing to my eye, but you decide. Let's take a look at the next one. These are from a book called Asian Style by Jenny DeGax. And let's take a look inside. You know, when you go to import stores, you're beginning to see a lot of these things being reproduced. You see things like trunks, these lacquer pieces, these bowls. All of these create these extraordinary still lifes in your home. These are things that you can easily achieve. So all day today, we're going to be talking about things like this. Okay, now. Looking to spruce up your life with some Indonesian furnishings? Well, we recently took a trip to a fabulous wholesale showroom crammed, and I do mean crammed, to the ceiling with authentic furniture and accessories collected from all over Indonesia. Yes, they're located here in Los Angeles, and they are open to the public, and we took a private tour with the woman who co-owns the place. She's Carrie McManus, and her place is called Temple McManus. No, it's not a real temple. You see, her husband's name is Temple. Temple McManus. So... Let's go, shall we? Come on. Behind the warehouse doors of the Temple McManus showroom lies the exotic world of Indonesia. Between trips to Bali, co-owner Terry McManus lets us pick her brain about Indonesian art and its recent rise in popularity. This is an interesting location. You're kind of in a back alley, mm -hmm. a busy back alley here. Um, it's a small little warehouse. You sort of feel like it's almost like a speakeasy where you knock on the door and you open it up and and here you have these things beautifully displayed in here. Yes, and you know, it's not that small. It's 3,000 square feet. Is it really? Well, it's oh, packed with so much stuff. That, that, yeah. We've got thousands of pieces in here. I, mean, I know you collect these things from all over the country. All over Indonesia, yes, yeah. which is a huge archipelago. Do you feel that, the, that this whole trend is increasing because we, we basically want a sense of antiquity around us? Yes, I think it is. And as I said before, it's the romance of Bali. And the world's shrinking and more people are getting to places like that. And they get a little taste of it and they want to come back and put it in their houses. Mm -hmm. And they nece can't necessarily do it themselves. It's a very difficult process. So we, we sort of have a romantic kind of fantasy about these faraway places, these exotic places that we've heard about. Absolutely. Uh, talk to me about... Um, positioning of things like this. I mean, I always say a couple of very primitive things backdrop by a couple of elegant things creates that just the position. Absolutely. Do you agree with that? I do. And my favorite is like in a modern room, a very modern room with stark modern furniture, you could put a beautiful primitive door just on the wall and all of the rest of the room can be totally unobtrusive, totally straight lines and very modern and you can then have that, throw that in as a piece of art. So really what you're saying is you can take simple pieces like these. It's about scale in certain respects, but it's also about grounding the room and giving it a focal point. Absolutely, yes. It's something that will give it like a wonderful painting or a wonderful, any wonderful painting or piece of sculpture. I regard most of these artifacts as pieces of sculpture. I, I would suppose somebody on a budget could take a couple of those pieces and put them in areas where they're not going to be under a lot of scrutiny and then save their money to get one big focal point piece absolutely. that really becomes the theme of that room. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, we have a lot of things that probably that would never make, break the budget. You know, a lot of stone, right. Buddhas, a lot of artifacts that wouldn't break anyone's budget. But we also have pieces that we sell to museums and collectors, so that are very, very high end. You know, we, we talk a lot on the show about merchandising the home, you know, the same way you would merchandise yes. your showroom. Yes. Um, and I noticed that uh, every so often you'll have a living 
live orchid here and there clustered with two or three objects. Any rule of thumb in your eye about how to make still lifes? Do you know, it's really an instinctive thing. I think that I love to have just one type of plant mm -hmm. where things are, but I try to choose things that come from the place where these things come from. So orchids are particularly high you know, in the list of plants. And we think of them as exotic. Yes, but there they grow in the trees. You know, you see them everywhere. It's wonderful. And so I try to just group things, not overdo it, but just a little bit. One can be enough. Depending on the size yeah. of the room, one can be enough. Is there a spiritual connection to this stuff? There is, you know, for the Balinese, a very spiritual connection and also to the to everybody because they use these things in their daily life. Mm -hmm. The masks are used in all these rice ceremonies. Mm -hmm. to put their, uh, everything is done, their hamtongs are protective spirits at the bit entrance to a village. Mm -hmm. So you get an enormous um, cross-culture, but you get everything's important to them. It means something. It's not just made for decoration. It's all part of their life and their daily life. Do you see yourself going back and forth to Bali for how long? Oh, ever. <laughs> Forever. Forever? <laughs> yes. Can't <laughs> give away from the place. Thanks, Kay. My pleasure, Christopher. Mmm, pretty cool, huh? You know, you've seen her on the show before. Some of that stuff is really amazing. Here again, remember, some of these pieces are investment pieces, but there are a lot of these pieces that you can get the same illusion without spending a lot of money. And we love that. A couple of pieces spread around the room can really ground that room and give it that wonderful, well-traveled look. Okay, coming up next, it's a marriage made in tchotchke heaven. And you're all invited. And you don't even have to bring a gift. So which side of the family are you with? Oh, the bride? Yeah. The groom? Oh, you're with the room. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Silly me. We're right back. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're talking about global design influences. You know, using those eclectic and interesting items from other lands and cultures to give the surrounding kind of a sense of antiquity. Well, infusing a space with an eclectic blend of cultures from another time and place is kind of like a marriage, sort of an arranged marriage, if you ask me. And if it's the case, the designer that you're about to meet kind of arranges marriages, I mean rooms. So joining us now to give us tips on creating multicultural spaces from Reusser Bergstrom Interiors. Please welcome Mark Reusser. How are you, Mark? Fine, thank you, Christopher. You've totally transformed our back room here. Um, and it's interesting, when, we first, when I first walked into the room, it seemed like everything went together. It was really only under sort of close examination that I realized that a lot of these things represent a lot of different cultures. Yeah, I and mean, we, we have a lot of different cultures together here from, you know, different countries. What right. we try to do is, is pull it all together with the darkness and the value of the woods and the colors and the backgrounds of the room. Mm -hmm. um, what we have in the front here, this table is from Indonesia. It's teak. It's actually very rare. It's made out of two planks. Uh huh. Is this old or new? This is a very old table mm. and this is currently has been restored. Um, so I think from about the 1800s. It's great looking. I love the scale of it too. It's, it's nice. It's heavy and what it is, it's rustic too. So mm -hmm. it functions as both a dining table or a work table. Um, that's what's nice about using some of the older pieces of furniture is that you and find And we're seeing that a lot now too, especially in, we're seeing a lot of, of multi-uses in spaces. So these kinds of items Correct. can really come into play. The dining room isn't just for eating and anyway. No, you, you know, here you can use it as a library. We've got the book cabinet. That's right, um, where normally China would be. Correct. Now you've got uh, that piece in there. Before we sort of move on to there, um, a lot of people are always confused about what they can mix and match. Mm -hmm. Obviously, today is devoted to getting that sort of sense Correct. of antiquity, whether it's real or not real, at mm -hmm. least the impression of that into your home. Now, here you've got two Asian-inspired chairs Correct. and then two colonial chairs. Yeah, these are sort of uh, basically current reproductions of Martha Washington chairs, exactly. Martha Washington-style chairs. We mm -hmm. have a Swedish chandelier. We have the older table, and it's all sort of pulled together. The idea is it gives you a traveled room. It gives you mm -hmm. a room that doesn't look designed, so to speak, but it's a room that looks yeah, like that, you that, that touch of Bombay, as they say. Correct, yes. and it's, it's a personal touch. Now, even some of the artifacts, this, tr this is, what, what is it called? This is just a wooden tray, just and it's trom, from Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea what they used it for, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, and then the urns are iron, they're from England. Mm -hmm. Now here again, I think, I think philosophically, we're sort of trying to get rid of the, um, what we considered our grandmother's stuff. We're sort of, we're, we're 
The world's becoming smaller. We're going beyond these borders to a lot of other places. And I'm starting to see a lot of these kinds of things represented in a lot of showrooms now. Correct. Well, you find it's actually, it's very traditional. You go back to Europe, the Europeans traveled the world and they would collect pieces. So you did find rooms like this mm -hmm. in many of the old homes. When the colonists came to the States, they brought all That's their right. old pieces. Uh, when they traveled the world, the seafarers, they brought these pieces together. So you would often see this type of environment. So as the world becomes smaller, they're bringing that stuff to our door now. Correct. <laughs> let's, go back and, let's go back and talk about this piece now. This is a Sri Lankan cabinet, mm -hmm. and um, we're currently using it as sort of a book and a dish cabinet, but it's out of a store. It, that's what it's believed to have been. It's probably it looks, an old merchant's yeah, cabinet. Yeah, it looked like that, yeah. And it's uh, out of mahogany. This is unfinished. This is the mahogany. It's, it's natural mm -hmm. state, so you can see the patina. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you don't like it in this color, you can finish it to match right. the table or to match any, anything Here you again, like. I think what's great about this is, is the space is being, has been more realistically and casually accessorized rather than just simply holding a collection of something that may only be used once a year. Well, yeah, you don't want it to look like a display cabinet, like it's on show for special items. You want it to sort of be flexible, to put things in it and I think as that, yours. That, that's a big trend, I think, in home design now, is we're getting away from that formal display look and more of a casual, accessible look. I, I think people are getting more used to showing actually how they live. They're actually living in their homes yeah. rather than just displaying their homes. Well put. Let's talk to me about the window treatments a little bit here. The window treatments are basically, they're just a, a denim. It's a white bleach denim. Very and um, we sort of just use this because it's a simple background. Mm -hmm. And then you've got sort of the, the rattan type of a shade, the, uh, the bamboo shade blend. So and here, here we're using the, it's, it's more of a texture in the room rather than a big focal point of the room. Correct, and it pulls in with the furniture. It's again, mm -hmm. has some of that, you know, Southeast Asian type of appearance. And they're very common now, the bamboo type uh, Absolutely. Of well, here again, I'm looking at a lot of things that th this table may be rare, but I could probably find a table that gives me this impression oh, yeah. for a nominal amount of money. Oh yeah, that you can find these in reproduction. This has sort of an English flair to it. This is actually, it's a Chinese chair. It's a 1940s it Chinese. Chinese. Oh, and, um, but it's a reproduction piece, mm -hmm. but it's done in sort of the, the modern style, so yes. it's interpretive. I see. Here again, I like that with the black and white photograph. I think that's a very pretty still life. Well, it sort of pulls the black up into the wall. Very bit. nice. Now come around to this corner here. Um, that we, that's a little just galvanized tray and you know instead of using this you could use a nice old campaign mm -hmm. tray or a wooden tray. It gives the corner, fills it up a little bit and it's light. That's but I love, that, I love that sparkle. I like that touch of modern here too. Here Correct. again, you're making a still life here as well. We try to do little vignettes in the yeah. room. And I think that's what makes homes really become a reflection of who you are. And then ultimately, talk to me about this area here. Well, the chest here is actually very interesting. This is an old campaign chest from, it's also Chinese, and it's similar to the English campaign chest or the French campaign yes, chest. Yes. And then the chair next to it is a saddle leather chair. That's a new chair. Mm -hmm. um, and we just had it designed for the space. I like the ottoman that comes with it. That really gives it's it a nice low a ottoman, of so you, your feet don't prop up too high. So when we look at the whole space in its entirety, we have basically a living workspace, we have a mm -hmm. library china cabinet, and we also have a relaxing space all in one Correct. space. Correct. That's great, Mark. Thanks very, very Thank much. Thank you very much for your time. That's terrific. Okay. I appreciate now, it. Now, just you wait. A Christopher will make over. When we come back, you won't want to miss it. Starts really kind of, uh, but gets really, mm. Hurry back. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're showing you how to warm up your world and decor with wonderful and worldly influences from all over the world. Global, we're calling it a whole global warming. We don't give you too many ideas. Y'all have a meltdown. Don't want that to happen. Okay, if you've been looking for a way to bolster up a family room den or just about any space in your house, we have an idea for you, and it's a global one at that. We recently found a reception area that, well, was kind of run down. But with a little imagination, we were able to transform it into an area Wait a minute, I'm getting way too ahead of myself here. Okay, let's take a look at what we started with, and then we'll figure out what we decided to do with our space. Now, just because it's a reception area doesn't mean the ideas here aren't applicable to lots of areas in your own home. Check it out. Gracious, warm, inviting. These words come to mind when looking at this space, right? No. Okay, me neither. This plain, boring room is actually the reception area of an office but it could be any room in your house that needs help. For the entrance to the office, I wanted a space that could handle a lot of activity, but also a place that could bring global design influence into the workplace. The world in a plain room? Well, that's a lot to ask for, but you know what? I bet I can do it. Yeah, hello. Um, I'm sorry, Christopher isn't available, but let me check. 
No, he's in meetings. Whatever. How cool. We now have a space. Now, this is an office entryway area, but the information for what we're building in here is applicable to all those wonderful spaces in your home that you don't know what to do with. This is a busy area, so we've got to treat it as a busy area, but what's really cool is look at this big sort of stand-up bar. Can you see yourself saying, martini, stirred, not shaken? Love that. This is simply a plywood base. We've just cut a piece like a boomerang as our top, and we built this structure. Now, the whole idea here, of course, is to bring those global influences into the office area. So, doesn't seem very global right now, but by the time we're done, you will have many frequent flyer miles that you can use as you choose. Here, we're going to take our bamboo. You know how we love that bamboo thing. We're going to wrap the entire front of this in bamboo, and we're going to faux finish this top. Uh -huh. Yeah, pay attention, because what we're doing here, you can apply anywhere in your home. Now, you've noticed that we've already painted the background. We've got a plum, we've got a green, we've got a, a mustard color back here. And how do we now take all those wonderful things that we know are very global and bring them into a space and still have pass-through area and all that stuff? Well, one of the things we did was we decided that we'd take a sort of a look at the Asian culture, Tan Su. That's why we built this. This is a very cool thing. This is basically a freestanding unit. Ooh! Now, you've seen us do this on our set. We did it here again. We needed a division between this area and this, well, not so important little kitchen. But you know what? This is an important space because this is the only kitchen in the space. This tansu divides this area from this area, but also gives us storage and space. Think about something like this as, as a divider in your living room. How cool. All right? Getting the drift? Now, this is a big focal point background, but it's big and it's mustard and whatever. We need a focal point for this room. So what we're going to do here is we're going to poster this entire wall. Cool. Another fun demo. And we have intrusive services like these doors. All we're going to do here is take just Luan, you know, that's that sort of veneer. It's lightweight. We're going to poster these things, cover our doors with this stuff so the eye goes here and not to the door. Hello, apartment dwellers. Really good idea there, too. Now, in our outside area here, we're going to add upholstery. We're going to add a big tie back of some wonderful fabric. And by the time that we're done, what's going to be so fabulous is that even though this has to be an amazingly functional place, what you're really going to get is when you walk into that front door, you're going to go, oh, I could be anywhere in the world. Ugh. Is that a mess or is this a mess? I think this is terrific though because this shows that you can take basically a dump like this and make it look halfway decent. So you see the drywall's up now. We've talked about the idea of making this a huge big focal point. We think that's really, really important. Here you see we want to build up this area with some kind of a device, okay, that separates this area from this area. Plus by the time we paint this, add a whole bunch of really cool things, you're going to be in business, okay? Feeling a little bamboozled. Oh, the bamboo? Yeah. Well, later. We've got a technique that'll even fool Mother Nature. But first, I know that you're curious to see how our makeover turned out, right? Well, up next, our fabulous import decor makeover. I'll be back. Welcome back, everybody. Today, our show is all about global design influences and how you, too, can create an interesting and lovely environment in your own home. Or, in our particular cases, these are corporate offices. Let's take a look at what we did. First of all, at the beginning, we started out by painting the space. Now, you notice we have the beautiful, rich terracotta color here. The same hue value, but in another color, is carried over to this beautiful pumpkin color. And then over here, same hue value, we have a khaki green color. And the reason why all these strong colors, saturated colors, work so well together is they are the same hue value. Okay? Now, you'll see a little peek out here. Let's go to the next piece, please. This is now our, for you, it would be a standing bar, or it could be a desk. For us, it's a reception desk. Now, in another show, we show you how to make this from beginning to end, so you may want to stay tuned for that. So this is the welcoming area. We've taken out this entire corner, again, for traffic flow. Let's go to the next one here. See this area here? Yeah, okay, that's this. That's this Tansu, okay? This 
Tansu area is just simply made out of MDF. It's a great place for tchotchke and display on this side. On the other side, there's a nice separation there, okay? So, are you ready to see our global design influence makeover transformation? It's so cool. I mean, hot. Oh, you know what I mean. Let's take a look, shall we? Come on. <laughs> Don't these look great? This is very global, I think. This says, I haven't got a clue. Oh wait, it's down here in English. This is good health, that one's good luck, prosperity. Those are all good things that a good young business like mine will probably need. Our reception area is all finished now, but you can think of this, remember, as a wonderful stand-up bar or a great place to, for storage in your own home. If you look at it now, it's all been completely done now in the bamboo that we've glazed, and I think that looks really terrific. And the top now has all been done in flexible molding, that, and then we've just taken a little bit of hot glue, and we've made it look like bamboo too. And then the very top has been faux finished with gold leaf paper against the terracotta color, and then lots of polyurethane. I think it looks sensational. It's a great idea. And I think it has a very exotic feel to it. We've also taken the bamboo theme and carried it up into our planter here. And so that sort of connects with this and the whole thing really looks fantastic. Now, let's talk about some of the other focal points in the room. Remember we had this back wall here that, well, it was big and mustardy and we thought we needed a focal point there. Well, we've got one now. Is this a great console? I love this. This is from our, our friends at Flex Steel, and it has just a little flair that gives a very nice Asian look, but really could go in just about any environment. And we've got a nice oriental style lamp here, but look at the wall now. The same uh, people that we got the, the fabrics from for our chairs at the Flex Steel, we also ordered more of that same fabric to do this entire wall, and this is done by a company called Thomas Gill. And what he did basically was take, cut it into squares, sew them, shifting the grain to give us this wonderful diamond pattern, added a little padding to it, and what's wonderful about it is just this single upholstered wall really changes the acoustics in here, so it feels more home-like and less office-y. Let's take a look at the rest of the, the uh, furniture. Here, we just took an ottoman and a couple of pillows and made it almost appear like a chaise, and I love this silk dragonfly look. Here again, the whole idea is to have that sort of global influence in everything. And here is the matching side table that goes with our console. And then, of course, we wanted someplace nice where people could come and sit down and relax. But this could, I mean, even though it's an office for us, this is a perfect little sitting room and some little nook in your home. The Dupioni silk pillows against that wonderful chenille background really looks great. I know you keep saying, what's that, what's that, what's that? I know. Isn't this the best? We love the bamboo idea so much here that we actually took uh, bamboo and caning and then faux bamboo, which is this lower rail here, and we create a wainscoting that goes all the way around the space, which we think is sensational. Just this little bit adds so much drama to this space. Then, of course, rich wall color against this is a little bit of organic going on, and I think that plays really well, too. And then we've got mirrors to help expand the spaces a little bit, and those are from our friends at Stanley Works, and I think mirrors in a small space really helps well, give you a little more breathing room. Here and here, we just simply took and added uh, just a pole with a, our own finials at the end and then just pulled everything back with these wonderful tassels. Aren't these pr pretty? These are by Conso, and I just think they're so terrific looking. So this becomes dramatic, but not only that, it also breaks this space up from a very busy back hall area, which um, really adds a lot more drama here. We love seeing this against this beautiful terracotta color. Here we had just enough room to add this little demi chest. And what we liked about this is we found a couple of frames in the same bamboo motif. We put one frame on the wall and then hung another picture inside of that. So that's kind of a two-tone thing going on here. I know, what's that, what's that, what's that? Remember we talked about the Luan covered in the caning? Well, there it is. We just trimmed it out with a little bit of ribbon, attached it to the door. Isn't that great? And you know, we rent this space, so that's gotta come down when we go. So that's a great way to take basically an eyesore or something that didn't seem to integrate very well and now give it that wonderful global feeling. Now for many of you who think that painting your ceiling dark is going to make the room look closed in, check out these suspended ceilings. So if you inherit something like this and you just kind of want it to go away, paint it out. Now we, we see our tonsu is now completely painted, all dressed up, and here again we've taken just half round molding, add a little bit of the hot glue to it and gold leafed it to tie that in with the rest of space. What a great storage idea. Now it's all finished and dressed looking wonderful. Again, we've added lots of little artifacts that 
handle storage, but also make a great statement like this little um, oriental tea caddy, which we think is so pretty. Covered boxes, that sort of thing. Those are great things for the office, especially for a home office where you could be possibly uh, accommodating a guest. So there you have it. For not a whole lot of money, using our imagination and playing up using organic elements like caning and bamboo and beautiful rich color and a little silk here and there, I think we've really accomplished our global feeling. It's getting a little warm in here. Hm. Global warming, you get whatever. Anyway, try this at home. I know you'll love it. Isn't that amazing what you can get into a small space? Let's look at these defined areas. Just in this one picture, you can see we have an entire workstation here where all work is neatly kept underneath the counter area, plus a stand-up bar area. Great for an instant buffet in a rumpus room. Think about this as your, as your basement. Redo, yeah. Over here, we've got sitting area here. This way, we have even more sitting area this way. Beautiful focal point wall here. Kitchen is now covered there. Let's take a look at the next one. There you see that area there. Not looking good? Yeah. Plenty of area to sit there. There's a couch opposite that. Let's take a look at the next one. Here you see with the, the merchandising, it's really all about texture on texture on texture. A lavender wall, then we've taken a couple of panels of a screen divider, put them up on the wall, hung the Chinese pieces in a collection. Remember, anything more than three is a collection over the top. Here you see the bamboo cylinder with the beautiful tropics, something living ties into the bottom area here. And finally, let's take a look at how we've merchandised the Tansu at the end. Isn't that pretty? Wonderful Asian-inspired things, covered boxes, place to put cushions, that sort of thing. Doesn't look like an office, does it? It looks just like your home. Well, that's the whole point. Now, do you see this back here? Those are those ugly, old, crummy corridors. Well, when we come back, I'm going to show you how you can do that yourself. This is a big wake-up call to you apartment dwellers, so hurry right back. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're showing you how to warm up any room with global ideas. Oh, it's a global warming thing today. Now, let's go back. Before the break, we showed you a great room redo that we did with our corporate offices, and we talked about those ugly core doors. And we rent our corporate offices, so we had to deal with the same thing a lot of renters have to do. If you look way back there, yeah, you see those doors that are very un they're obtrusive. So we wanted to sort of add another layer of texture, hoping that the eye would go to the texture, and then the brown of the doors, of the fire doors, in that particular case, simply became background. Okay? So that's what you see now. Now I'm going to show you what we did to cover that up. Let's just say that this represents our door, okay? And that's just about as attractive as the one that we got. We inherited lots of these all through the space. And remember, this was an adjoining space and hallway area, so what we did with one door had to be serviceable for all of the doors. That was very key. So rather than doing something too goopy, we decided to keep it simple and stay with just natural organic textures. And since the Asian feel was kind of what we were going for, we chose to resurface the door, okay? This is good old Luan. We use this a lot. Okay. Now, you can either remove all of the hardware on the door and do the Luan over the entire surface of the door, just leaving enough to make sure that it doesn't interrupt your door jam, or you can do what we did and actually cut out around the doorknob. Okay. So here you see we made one paper template. Let's say this was made out of paper. And we times this by as many doors as we have in the area. This is then traced, and then this is then sought out to give you this. Okay? So this represents exactly where the doorknob would be. In our particular case, we had sort of that kind of a doorknob. And we sort of like that idea because if you look at a lot of the Asian style door treatments, they have these big round plates there. You remember those? Yeah, the big brass ones. So you can embellish this any way you want to. The next thing we want to do is add that texture that would sort of deflect the eye. So the eye would go to the texture and not to that background ugly brown color. Because remember, the landlord said we couldn't go there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, this is a product you've seen us use a lot. It's called Top Bond. It's actually a shoe adhesive, okay? And you can get this in a lot of places where they do leather work. All right. Now, here, 
when applying this stuff, because we're going to apply it with um, mail order, um, either rattan or caning, this is caning here, you want to turn this over, you want to literally take this stuff, which is quite goopy. See how goopy that is? Yeah, yeah, that is pretty goopy. You want to apply that evenly to the back of here, like so, really work it in, okay? You also want to apply it to your surface. Let those two set up a little bit so they get really tacky, okay? That is not a taste call, that's a tack. Okay, great. Now, do it in a well-ventilated area because I'm about ready to pass out as we speak. When that's all done and it's all tight on there, then we're ready to cut it out, okay? Now, I'm doing this on a door thingy. However, think of this in terms of some of the ideas that we talked about today, doing great big squares of this, putting bamboo, making big picture frames and putting them in a wall or maybe as a headboard directly over a bed. How cool is that for that wonderful Asian look? All right, now it's on there. And let me tell you, once it's on there, it's on there. Then with a pair of scissors or a trim knife, you want to cut all the way around this, okay? And what that will do, well, that will leave you this piece. Obviously, this is in miniature. All right. Now, there's a couple of different things you can do. You can stop right here if you'd like, but we suggest that you do a finish off detail. Let's take a look. This is, you can do it with just a, a regular a tight woven ribbon like this or batting material, strapping material. And basically, we took the, either the same glue or you can just take your hot glue gun, take your hot glue gun, go all the way around, turn it under like so, glue the other side, okay? Like so, as you turn the corner, you turn the corner like so, creating your mitered edges there, all the way around to trim that out, okay? This then just gets put, this is so lightweight that just with little tiny finishing nails you can attach to this and when you leave the place the landlord will never know unless he's really crazy and <laughs> then you should have moved anyway. Let's take a look now at that space with the door all done. Ain't that pretty? Yeah, you see how it turns around that handle? Let's take a look at a close-up of that and there you see all the trim in place. Now, another great feature in that same space was the wainscoting. Now, it wasn't the wainscoting in the traditional sense. It was a great way for us to add the bamboo element and to continue that same natural feel around the entire space. It was a great cross-linking device, a uniter, as I like to say. Now, that was done the same way in making, basically, your Luan, okay? Here's a piece of Luan about as deep as we wanted our wainscoting to be, okay? We simply took our same top bond, apply it the exact same way, applying on both sides, cutting out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? When that's all done, we then set that aside, ready to install. We then want to take some of our bamboo and we cut that to the right size. Now here with the bamboo, we actually pre-drilled holes because those holes will go in all the way around the room where the studs are, okay? Now, if you find that you need more space, you can also make these half rounds that you can insert periodically here and there to help you with that routine. Now, this would be the cap to create the top. Now, let me bring this out and show you where we are at this stage. The background color of the terracotta represents the actual wall itself, okay? I'm going to stick this down here like so. Now, it's gorgeous looking, isn't it? The reason why this is so nice and glossy after it's been attached is we've just added just regular wood stain with polyurethane and cover the whole tops of these like so. Gorgeous there. You can also do it here once you have fixed this to the wall. So the idea is this overlaps the seam at the very top. At the very bottom, we simply took, you can either take a, little, a real piece of bamboo just like this. We like the scale of a smaller one at the bottom, a larger one at the top to give it a really uh, rail look to it. This is just a piece of half round. This is just basically, um, a dowel cut in half, all right? Now, over the top of this, you see that we've taken hot glue and a little bit of Flexol to create a faux bamboo finish. In our next segment, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this technique on a chair as well. Once that's done, then we just simply gold leaf that, took the same stain, covered this in the same stain to kind of knock it down a little bit, and that is what went all the way around the areas, which is really pretty okay. Let's go back and take a look at what that looks like there you see a close-up of it, and there you see how fabulous that looks as a wainscoting. Isn't that terrific? Okay, more bedazzling bamboo when we come back, so stay right there. Welcome back, everybody. Today, our show is all about creating warm and cozy environments using the influence of global design. Now, before the break, we showed you a fabulous wainscoting using a bamboo technique. Well, now we're going to show you how to get that effective bamboo, well, 
but that's not really bamboo, but what even bloom Mother Nature. Joining us now from our very own art department, Stephen Lieber. All right. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, last season, we did a tray table for a, uh, a master bedroom in our showcase house, right, right. and you developed this technique. We've gotten right. so many letters of people saying, how else can we use this? I love that thing, too. I know. <laughs> I, know I know. That was like the best thing. And, and, and the reality of it is, you know, this is bamboo. Yeah, this is what That's bamboo what looks from. like. That's where it starts from. Uh huh. And there's all kinds of bamboo, and there's all kinds of styles. You know, representing bamboo can be as just like anything else. It can be modern looking. It doesn't have to be realistic. No, but you can take it to a lot of different levels. Now, one of the, the hottest things going right now is the resurgence of a lot of this sort of um, Asian and European inspired bamboo furniture. Right, which is priced. Out of the ballpark. Exactly. And what if you have a bunch of like colonial stuff and you go, I ain't got no uh, Asian and colonial <laughs> stuff. You have to try and make it yourself. Right. So that's what we're going to show you how to do. Terrific. So you went to the flea market and you yeah. found yourself a... A thing with good bones. Like something we talked with about. good bones. Right. Okay. Probably would have walked by this a million or two times. And but so, yeah. structure's good. Right. And it has nice things, you know, but it's not terribly bamboo looking. So mm -hmm. what we got to do is try and disguise part of it to get rid of this look right. and give it another look that make, where it looks like it's more put together with bamboo pieces. Cool. So we did that with the old hot melt glue gun. Mm -hmm. And as you see, I've already got hot melt glue going on. This is to show where I've kind of given the joints. Okay, so if we took a look at a piece of bamboo like this, basically what you're simulating are the joints. Are these areas here. Exactly. And right. I tried to look, when I'm looking at the piece, I said, where could I try and make it look like this was a hunk of bamboo rather than a turned piece of yes. nice wood. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what I did was I architecturally started to go at it. Like I took a saw and I cut that because I said I can't make that look like bamboo. Yeah. So you've taken that finial off exactly. altogether and you've replaced that finial with just some glue, glue up there, right? Okay. And I don't know if they can now, see this it. Is, is this regular hot glue or is this that wood, wood hot glue? Well, that particular piece right there is wood glue, which I like better because it sticks and it looks yeah. like that. Yeah, there is. As opposed to the clear stuff. A to the clear. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, what I did was then I took that and I made an, a knot at the end like, so it looked like the end of a piece of bamboo. Now, it looks pretty goopy at this point. Right. But it, but it won't when we're all done because you're going to ease that. Correct? Right. What I'm going to do is uh, I'll trim any hairy stuff off. You'll see where the bamboo, where the uh, hot melt glue started to stretch. Sure. Like mo mozzarella cheese or something like <laughs> exactly. that. And exactly. It gets to be a pain. And then all you do is you take a brush, like a little chip brush, mm -hmm. and I just take this Flexol right from the can, washes off the water, it's not going to be anything dangerous to work with, and you just simply paint it on, and you use it in both directions. And you can see it's starting to grain yeah, it's like bamboo. And now, did you have to pre-sand this, or will it stick to this by itself? It's, it'll stick to it by itself. You could, as a precaution, if it was something that was really heavily stained, the stain is almost gone on this. This has been out right. of weather. Okay, so, so it's I already been to. retooled. But if you so went to, to a if you went to a store and bought an Ethan Allen or something now, like that. See what it's doing here. Do something a little bit on the front here. Right. right. See what what's see, happening. Yeah. What's nice about this is if you want a texture, and if you're going to come in like with a rub mm -hmm. over the top, like you paint this in a color and you come yep. with a rub, yeah, you know, all this drama in here will show. If exactly. you don't want that much drama. You can take the same brush, and you take a little bit of it out, just smoothing it. Smoothing it. And you, know, you see, can. It's really, it's really to fix all that eases. Right. It, it takes you right. up to the joint, and then eases from the joint as it continues. And then what on. I like to do when I'm trying to make it look more realistic is I'll go like this, and I'll drag it each way, and then I'll take a little dimple, and I'll try and rough it up a little bit. So we don't you know, lose our You just together. tweak it a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and you notice with some of this is really willy-nilly the way I put this stuff mm -hmm. on. If I wanted to look more like industrial bamboo, I'd do a nice rounded mm -hmm. thing and it would be more crisp and clean and not wanna, real looking but fun. Okay, go ahead. Now, you were going to go on to this really quick. Sure. I just wanted to show just, just what that looks like. Once It looks so nasty at this point. Right. Once you begin easing that, it's really amazing what that does. And it's so I'm so easy. crazy about this technique. And then another thing I did, don't be afraid with these things. These aren't old friends. Just go like this, snap it, pull the old thing out. And then with real bamboo, uh, in this case, we just took, you know, a mat knife. Yeah. And we cut, you know, a piece off. And we measured it, you know, ahead of time. Smart. And then we just stuck these little babies right back in there using a little Which, bit of glue. Yeah. Pour a little glue in there, boom. Let's take a look at this final one here okay, while great. you're finishing that up. This is what it looks like all together. This is terrific looking. Yeah, I liked it. Here you see the knots at the top. Right. We also took the time to make a seat top. Here's a seat top that can go on it. Very simple, just, you've seen a, a poster seat top many times. Here you see it looking really terrific. Boy, you really fooled Mother Nature. Yeah, see I picked up the nice drum in there? That's I like that great. Stephen, as usual, thank you so much. Thank you. So much bamboo. Well, 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 well. That is our show for today. That is our global warming show, I should say. You know, it seems that even in this day and age, we tend to gravitate towards the influences of other cultures. And yet, oftentimes, 
the people of those cultures, because of their differences, are difficult for us to understand. You know, the world is becoming a very small place. Technology has put globe trotting at the end of our fingertips. As we begin to embrace the artifacts and creative artistic ideas of these cultures, perhaps we might want to take a moment to begin to understand the people there and to understand that we can learn as much and be as enriched by people of other countries as well as their stuff. So let's make a conscious effort to embrace our differences, celebrate the uniqueness between our cultures, and learn to be fascinated rather than judgmental about customs and cultures we may not understand. Okay? Next time you look at an object, think about the people. You can do it. Bye for now. <laughs>